Uh, I'm a pathologist. I've been a practicing pathologist um, all of my professional life. I went to the American Medical Association in 1982 as the editor of the Journal of the American Medical Association and with responsibility for all of AMA's medical journals and as well as television and we started the website in 1995. Then I had 10 years as editor-in-chief at Medscape uh, from WebMD uh, from 1999 to 2009. Then my next jobs are as the editor-at-large for MedPage Today, an online source of breaking medical news free of charge to the world out of New York, uh, where I do a column once a week. In the last 50 years, medicine has changed to the extent that it would be hard to recognize it, coming out as a medical student from 1957 and now looking at it in 2012. Uh, its practice in, around the world has changed in a wide range of ways, but it's the technology, the science, the understanding that has changed the most. The human body hasn't changed at all. The diseases are the same, and the need for one doctor, one patient together to figure out the right thing to do, all things considered, including cost, has never been different. But the opportunities are so much greater Unfortunately, the opportunities to use high science, high technology also becomes a temptation to use high science and high technology, whether or not it's needed. And I think that's where we are now. Mostly, we have so many tools available. Many of them are very expensive. We have to figure out the right thing to do for each patient on a one patient, one moment time in the much broader context than we once had of much more limited scientific knowledge. And that requires judgment big time, which we think should be shared judgment between one doctor, one patient, one moment, one decision. Let it be informed by the best evidence and also consider cost. And that means cost to anybody, not just cost to the patient. The American people have an election coming up in November. One of the many issues has to do with health care and what to do. We have a bill called Obamacare by both Republicans and Democrats now that the Democrats say we're going to sustain, enhance, and implement. The Republicans say we're going to repeal and replace. But that's rhetoric. What's actually going to happen, whether President Obama or a possible President Romney is elected, is probably not much different because the law is the law. And what will matter is not who's the president, but what happens in the Congress and in the Senate. If the Democrats take over the United States Congress and the Senate and have their president, then the Obamacare will be built on, will be implemented fully, and will go full speed ahead. If, on the other hand, uh, the Republicans take over both the House, which they have now, and the Senate with more than 60 senators and President Obama, President Romney at that point, then they might repeal, but they haven't said what they'd replace with because they don't know what they'll replace it with. But it'll all be theirs, and who knows what will happen at that point. But mostly, I don't think much will change because n neither the Democrats nor the Republicans are going to get 60 senators. It's just not on the cards. The House could be closer, so either president will have limited authority limited power, at least at the beginning, for the next two years. As of now, if I were able to be the health care czar for the United States, I would implement an improved Medicare for All, starting coverage with birth, possibly at conception, and continuing coverage by Medicare through the life of the person. That, of course, only takes care of people eligible for Medicare which is American citizens. That would eliminate Medicaid because Medicare for All would incorporate all the Medicaid population. But I would allow there to be the opportunity to, to opt out, where individuals who want to use their own money to buy their own medical care would be allowed to do so without penalties. But I think that's where we will go. Meanwhile, the Medicare we have will also go broke in a matter of five to 15 years, depending upon how we put in cost controls. It looks now like, well, uh, the main problem, obviously, is that Medicare costs are driven by procedures, and the more you do, the more you get paid. That has to change. Probably more 
maybe most physicians need to go on a salary basis where what their pay doesn't depend upon how many of something they do. So there's no motivation to do things that don't need to be done. So I think the accountable care organizations that are part of the Affordable Care Act offer a good opportunity to maintain high quality, uh, improve safety, and also begin to control costs. They're young, only a couple years old, any of them, but the early ones seem to be actually doing that. So I think accountable care organizations had a major way within a Medicare for All system in which most physicians are paid on a salary basis would do a lot to fix the system, a lot. I believe that diet and lifestyle are hugely important for individuals and for the public health, for everyone in the country for a large number of reasons. The science is clear, it's possible using knowledge we have now for people to take charge of their health and to maintain a healthy body weight and maintain a good exercise profile. That can be done and it should be done. I think companies like one that I now work at, which is Everyday Health, have diet and lifestyle as the main stimulus for the country and we have 30 million unique users last month. So there are a lot of people who are really into this and doing very well.